Welcome back. I'm here today with Vida Blue. He's a legend in baseball, especially here in the Bay Area. Uh, had a successful career with the Oakland A's. And Vida, welcome to today's show. Thank you very much. For, thanks for having me. So Vida, <laughs> I, I got to go back and uh, it's great to have you here on, on the show today. And I remember watching you as a kid. Uh -huh. uh, one of my heroes. Uh, you mean, Tim, I'm that old? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, go ahead. I'm sorry. But, uh, go ahead. We're, we're good. So let's go back. How did you get into, uh, how, did you, how did you transition into a baseball career from? Uh... Uh, well, you know, growing up in Louisiana, uh, in the summertime, that's all I did, played sports. Uh, there were no Game Boys and, and electronic devices around. And uh, matter of fact, uh, Parents would kick me out. Get out of the house. Go do something. Yes, ma'am. <laughs> and uh, you can't rake leaves in the summer because, you know, everything is in growth and bloom. And uh, I played sports. It was just, you know, pickup ball in the streets, stick ball with the, my buddies next door, throwing balls against the uh, garage door. The way kids grew up. I, I'm sure that still happens, but not as much as it did then because that's all we had, as I mentioned. So, uh uh, we got organized and played in the Little Summer League, that's all, and it just grew from there. But uh, uh, I was just lucky to be blessed with the ability to throw a baseball. I don't think it's, I don't think it's that big of a deal. Uh, I'm glad that, you know, I took advantage of the opportunity to play professional ball because it uh, was a source of income for me to help my, after my father passed away, to help my sisters through school and my brother and my mom to, to, to be able to function. And survive, and it was just a, I guess a God saying that I was the chosen one out of my family to become the breadwinner after my father passed away, being the oldest of the six kids. How old were you when your father passed? Uh, I was so September, so I had turned, I had turned 18 that July of '69, I think it was, yeah. So, uh, but yeah, it's it's uh, it's crazy how it all just came about. And um, I got a chance, and I got drafted by the A's to play baseball. And uh, as I mentioned, you know, opportunity presented itself, and I took advantage of it. So um, you started your career with the Oakland A's. Right. And I imagine that baseball was much different then than it is today. Uh, well, you no, know, it, it, was, it was the same, same game. You know, the, the, they make a lot more money now, which is okay. Uh, I have no regrets about that, the money I made. I put it to good use, and uh, as I mentioned, it allowed me to function every day. And with my uh, sisters, helping them get through college, uh, one's a chemist, one's a executive bank secretary. My sister Annette is law enforcement, and she's the dare officer in our little town back in Mansfield, Louisiana. Uh, sister number four is Sandra. She works for, I think Sunbeam. One of the uh, now Sunbeam was one of the uh, companies that they made. Uh, I mean, like toasters and uh, and stuff like that. Yeah, but uh, she works. She has worked for them for a long time. But they're all successful, and uh, I got to play baseball for a living, which I never think of it as a job when you're out there having fun and, and entertaining people. So you were with four teams through your baseball career: the Oakland A's from '69 through '77, mm -hmm. then uh, San Francisco Giants '78 right. through '81, and. Then to the Royals, 1982 through 83. San Francisco. San Francisco Giants, 85, 86. So, yeah. out of those teams, is there one that you connected with the most? Probably the 72 A's because uh, I was tw I turned 22 that year and uh, we won the championship, the first of the three that we won. And uh, uh, all the guys, I was the youngest player on the team, and all the guys were some of them like uncles and more or less like a father figure to me because, uh, again, being the youngest kid there, you kind of like. Uh, going to the World Series, Series was new to all of us because we had never gone and played on teams that had, had done that before. But it was a great accomplishment. And uh, it's something I'll never forget, the connection that you have with your teammates. They are kind of like an extension of your family because you spend so much time together and, and you're fighting for that one come and go, which is to win a championship as, a, as an athlete. When you won the Cy Young Award in 71, uh -huh. uh, how did that set on you? Uh, I don't know. Again, I, I was so young that I couldn't appreciate winning the awards, the MVP and Cy Young. But uh, as I've gotten older, I, I appreciate the hard work that went into and the commitment that went into uh, doing what I did and to have the success that I had and being voted as the best player 
to win the Cy Young Award and to play the American League for sure and uh, to be uh, voted the most valuable player of the whole league. You know, that's like one guy out of like 700, 800 guys and I was that chosen one again and uh, pretty cool now that I think about it, pretty cool. I'm visiting here today with Vida Blue. He is a baseball legend here in the Bay Area and uh, we've been talking about his baseball career and uh, Vida, when we get back, I want to fast forward this into what you're what you're doing today to help the youth. Uh, we'll be right back after these messages. I love fishing, you know, with my family. I think it would be easier to use a net. It was so much fun. The times when we are together, it makes it all, all the more worth it. Having dad teach them how to like cast a fly rod and... As long as we're doing stuff together, we're having fun. Some people see a father and a son fishing together, while others see a succession plan. Welcome back. I'm here today with Vida Blue. He's a baseball legend, uh, played for both the Oakland A's and the San Francisco Giants. And, uh, you know, I imagine you hear the, the baseball, baseball, baseball all your life, right? Yeah, I do. <laughs> but, uh, but, but, you know, I, I guess you, you kind of deserve it, uh, winning the World Series three years in a row or being with the Oakland A's. The, 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 um, I guess. I, I don't know. I don't. It's. It's just something that I did. Uh, that, that's what I made a living. It was my profession. And uh, I was so involved in it and committed to it, like any other job, you know. Uh, even though it's, it's a form of entertainment for the masses that watch it on television and people that attend the games in person, uh, uh, I'm just out there throwing a baseball. I, I don't think that's that big of a deal. Now, if I could balance my checkbook, that's more challenging to me than throwing a baseball. But uh, yeah, it's, at the same time, I, I try to understand it from another person's perspective of uh, appreciating what we did as athletes on the field. And uh, I, I, I get that part of it, but uh, it just doesn't. I'm like, we just throw the baseball. You know, it, it, today they have the sophistication. They got the radar on right. you know, clocking, how fast. Back then, did they have all that technology? No, they didn't, uh, and they estimated that I threw like 94, 95 miles per hour, and I, I guess that's accurate. I don't know, and uh, uh, it wasn't, look, I was born and raised in Mansfield, Louisiana, and uh, it was a kind of sad de environment that I grew up in, kind of depressed and suppressed, I guess I should say, but, uh, you know, sports was a way out for me, not the only way out, but it was a way out. And I use that to, to get out of that situation, but uh, I still go back to Mansfield, Louisiana. I mean, it's home, home is home. What, you can't deny that. Uh, there are a lot of things that I wish I could change and oh, hopefully I will continue to have an impact on, on the people of that town in a very positive way, hopefully. But uh, yeah, sports was just something that I did and I, I, I'm glad people make a big deal of, of the fact, oh, he was this and he was that. I'm like, I was just another man that, that played baseball. I. I uh, now, I've always felt that way, and I've always had that attitude about it. It's just a baseball game, but I'm glad that I can appreciate people walking up to me saying they saw me pitch, and they can appreciate uh, uh, what I did. You know, kids say, hey, you gave me a baseball 30 years ago, and I gave it to my son, and those are stories that I just love to hear. I want to go back to the uh, Cy Young Award and also uh, being awarded the most valuable player in 71. Uh -huh. um, what, what led up to that? I mean, was it, was it just, uh, was it, was it uh, the, the getting both? I, I don't think many people have both in the same year, Cyan. Uh, there are about eight or ten pitchers that have won it because a uh, everyday player can't win the Cy Young Award, and there's always been a big controversy as to whether a pitcher should be allowed to win the MVP. And the, the answer to that is if he makes that big of an impact on the league overall, he should be considered. And uh, just so happened, I was considered, and I, and I won the award. I'm not, I don't remember who even finished second in the MVP voting. I know that uh, Mickey Lolich, a left-handed pitch from the Detroit Tigers, finished second in the uh, Cy Young uh, voting. But uh, it's uh, it's quite a quite a an award to have. But I don't know. I, I just went out there and did everything that I could do, and I was just again blessed physically with the ability to throw a baseball. 
And uh, that one year, everything just, the stars lined up for me, where Vita Blue could be the MVP in the Cy Young Award one. And uh, I didn't do any more, any less, anything special. Uh, I just went out there and did what I was blessed to do, which is, and I said a lot just to throw a baseball. I, and I, I, I guess I had that it factor that one year, I don't know. When I grow up, I want to work with very successful people. I want to advise people so that they can pay less tax. Hang out with my clients on the golf course. Fishing! And on their private yachts. They will all be my friends too. I want to work with the VCs who will fund the next Fortune 500 company. When I grow up, I want to be just like my dad. Money won't buy you happiness in life, but we can help take care of your financial affairs so you can focus on what's really important. Today with Vida Blue, he's a baseball legend in the San Francisco Bay Area, played for both the Oakland A's and San Francisco Giants. And um, Vida, I want to move beyond baseball because there's obviously have been a lot of years between, you know, when you uh, when you stepped out of baseball in 1986 and coming to today. What have you been working on? Uh, I do a lot of charity work, uh, and I'm involved with a school in Oakland called Northern Lights. I went there like three years ago just to speak to the eighth grade class. Three years ago and counting, they've named a field after me. I do a golf tournament with my name on it uh, to support Northern Lights, you know, academic programs and the arts and, and, and sports. And uh, I am a strong believer of giving back to the community. Uh, remembering how I grew up in Mansfield, Louisiana, all the neighbors. And, uh, my mother's neighbors in our neighborhood always stayed on my case and I uh, had to do the right thing all the time. So I had eyes on me all the time, man. But uh, just knowing that all those folks who always took the time to, to give me some fatherly or motherly advice and to help me in any way that they could as far as, uh, uh, you know, my athletic career as an amateur when I played high school sports back in Mansfield, Louisiana. But uh, I, I, it's just a natural thing for me to want to give back. and. Uh, uh, Northern Light School is near and dear to my heart, so uh, I do a lot of stuff there. I, I go and visit with the classes. I'll sit in the eighth grade class one day. I might sit with the seventh grade class the second half of the day. I might go to, it's, it's our K through eight, so I might go sit with the uh, kindergartners and have lunch with them, so it's pretty cool to be doing that. And they all know who I am, which is not a big deal, but the mere fact that they see somebody positive uh, in their lives is a good thing, and, and I'm a true believer of, there's no such thing as a bad kid. I think he or she will do the stuff that we teach him or her to do. And if we can keep it all positive, I think we're, we're better off in the long run to, uh, to always stay positive reinforcement with kids. I love that, uh, positive reinforcement. Tell me, what are some of the challenges you see happening? Well, you, you know, today? unfortunately, uh, the old adage about children raising children, you know, uh, teen pregnancies and all kind of crazy stuff that goes on in our world today. The, the world is going mad, if, and we got to slow that madness down. Uh, I do believe that, uh, again, as I said, if we teach kids to do the right thing, they will do that. I don't say there's a bad kid, not that I know. Uh, and I always give a child benefit of the doubt. Uh, as I tell the teenager, shake my hand while you still know everything, because, you know, I was the same with it. It's the evolution of life sometimes, I think. When I was 18, I wanted to be 21. And as I tell my 22-year-old kids now, enjoy being 22. You don't have to be 25 when you're 22. Enjoy being 22. Enjoy life on life terms today. And uh, you, you may not be dealt, you may think you haven't been dealt a good hand, but sometimes you can go elsewhere and, and look around and you'll see that you've been blessed with, with the hand that you're dealt. So just, uh, just you know, try to live life to the fullest and, and make yourself available to help someone else because it, when you give, it always comes back to you. At least that's the way I was brought up and taught. You have a lot of faith in your, your life. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, I, look at me, man. Come on. This, look, I'm this way every day. I don't have a wrinkle in my forehead, I've been told, because I'm like, what is that? I, I just, life is good. And it should be this way every day. Uh, Again, you know, you can look at your circumstances and say, oh, this is not fair. Why me? But you can also say, okay, this happened. So every problem, there's a solution. You got to go to plan A. Oh, that didn't work. 
Okay, I'm going to plan B. I go to plan D sometime too because I'll try certain things. It doesn't work. I'll try something else. It doesn't work. I'll try something else. And I just keep going until I get back the positive stuff that I want to get out of my life that day. And, and life is a day-to-day -day challenge. Trust me, it's a day-to-day -day challenge to survive for some people, to function for other people, and uh, just, just to get along with their day-to-day -day lives. Uh, it is challenging. It's not easy. Nothing is easy. And I wouldn't sit here and lie to you, to, to you on this camera right now and say life it is. Life is challenging for some people every day. Out of all the kids that you work with uh, over the years, are there certain instances or uh, memories that stand out? Yeah, there's a kid now I know who, who j just to reference what I just talked about, who wasn't dealt, in my opinion, uh, he didn't get a good hand in life. His mom had issues, and um, he was like a crack baby, you know, and he went to the same school, Northern Light School. He's had some issues. Now he's attending De La Salle High School, which a lot of students from Northern Light School have gone to. He's put his life together. He's moved on. Uh, his mother will always be his mother, and he's always got to show respect to her as his mother, as her son. But uh, he's come a long ways, and this kid said, I said, no way. The deck is stacked against this kid, but he's fought through all those odds, and uh, he's like a miracle child for me because he's done all the right things. He works his tail off to be a good student at uh, De La Salle, but he's a good athlete, but he wants to be a good student athlete, and uh, I expect good things from him in the next two years of his life. So you're working with the kids at Northern Light. You're, you're really on, on campus and, uh -huh. and yes, involved I am. with these kids. I, I enjoy it, and uh, can't say enough about the staff that they have there, too, because they show so much patience with students. And, uh, you know, the average classroom probably has about eight to ten students. So the one-on-one -on -one the, from the instructor to the student is very, uh, very surreal because they get to take the time. It's not, uh, they don't have some agenda where they got to be, be on chapter 20 by this time next week, you know. They can go real slow to make sure that everybody's getting what they need to, make sure everybody's learning what's being taught. And uh, that's the beauty of going to a small school like that. But uh, it's great for students who, who can't move at that same pace. And there are some students, they have some gifted students there who can move a little fast, but that same student will go over and assist the teacher in assisting another student of getting what it is they're teaching and make sure that he or she is learning it the, the proper way. What advice would you have for a student who aspires to be an athlete, and, but, but they got to get through the school too? So. Uh, well, you, you know, obviously if you want to be an athlete, you, you care about sports, and sports is a, is a good, is, it's a good teacher as far as learning how to work together. It teaches about failing when you lose a game. And uh, my advice to a student that wants to be a student athlete is you're going to have to be committed to do both. You've got to be, work just as hard on the athletic field as you do in the classroom, if not hard in the classroom. Because the other one opens the door for you uh, to do bigger and better things. Uh, you can be a great athlete and not be a good student, but the deal is to be a good person. That, that's the bottom line, to be a good person on a day-to-day -day basis. Uh, um, we all are challenged with doing the right thing, and the, the trick is to do the right thing. Buddy, you have a golf tournament coming up? I do. Yeah, when is that? Can you give us some more information? What's the date? October 27th at uh, TPC Harding Park in, in uh, not, I'm sorry, TPC in Hayward, excuse me. Uh, the new course, they have a new clubhouse there, and we're raising money for Northern Light School, and uh, I was so convinced to put my name on the tournament. It's our second annual tournament, and I'm looking forward to participating, and uh, hopefully somebody here in your viewing audience will, uh, will be able to uh, come and participate uh, October 27th. I don't have a phone number off the top of my head, but I'm not sure if you guys can put that in there or not. And we'll put it right on the screen, right okay. here. Here's the Northern that. Light School, and... Uh, and uh, go ahead and click the link and register for Absolutely. the uh, tournament. So. Appreciate that. Thank you. Okay, Vida, thanks for being on today's My show. My pleasure, man. This is cool. <laughs> and we'll be right back after these messages.